Five is all you get today. What's up, guys? Uh, we are here with this week's Q&A. Um, starting off, uh, I pinned this one. I know this was a troll question, but I think this is a great uh, subject to address. Uh, have you ever done 52 sets of bench in a week? I have done 52 sets of bench in a fucking session. So uh, all this 52 sets a week too much, not enough, optimal. I've done 52 sets in a week. I bench more than most of y'all will ever deadlift. Uh, so do more work. Uh, but seriously, the card game. I've mentioned to y'all before, uh, I used to bench five days a week, uh, five days in a row even, Monday through Friday, uh, heavy to failure all the fucking time. Um, you know, we ate a lot of food, we drank, we smoked, etc. But we put in the fucking work and we ate a lot of calories and I think that's the gist of a lot of things. But the card game, take a deck of cards, 52 cards, turn over a card, you do how many reps are on the card, face cards were 10. Um, pick a weight, uh, you know, a lot of times we do 135. Uh, as I got stronger, my training partner stuck with 135. I did 225. And, you know, you turn over a card, get a two, you do two reps. Turn over a card, you get a nine, you do nine reps, etc. till the deck is done. Uh, 52 sets in one session. And that's an old school, old school uh, workout. If you can't do it with bench, you can do it with push-ups. But uh, 52 sets in a week is for pussies. Do 52 sets in a session. Let's see what's hiding down here at the bottom that I can't see. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, Zuckerberg versus Musk versus Bezos on a celebrity tech bra tri triple threat death match. Who wins? Um, ah, man, I'm going to have to go with Bezos, I guess, because he's on the sauce. Uh, so I'm going to pick him. He's he's cheating. The other two may or may not be on the sauce, but Bezos definitely is. What matters more for strength, size or technique? Size. Uh, and it's not even close. Go on open powerlifting. Uh, look up the weight classes and look up the totals. There's your answer. I know a lot of people... You know, see these hyper arch bench presses and, you know, the the really technical sumo deadlifts with the kabuki bar um, being done by some lighter people. And oftentimes these videos get a lot of attention um, and perception can be reality, but reality is actually reality. And uh, the bigger weight classes are dominating uh, in strength. Uh the strongest men in the world at world's strongest men uh, are not the, you know, 100 kilo guys and under those guys are great athletes and they're strong as fuck. This is not to detract from them, of course, but, uh, size, uh, is way more important than technique for strength. Favorite ab exercises for hypertrophy. Um, weighted decline sit-ups. And I got that from my man, natural hypertrophy. Uh, I've never done, other than those, those are the only ab exercises I've ever done, like specifically for hypertrophy in my abs. And that's only been recent. So I'm, I'm not the person to ask here. Uh, I'm a weighted plank guy. Uh, and then like static heavy holds, like a front squat heavy hold. Um, and then uh, carries, like a zercher carry with the yoke, um, things like that. Uh, and those are for strength in my core, not necessarily hypertrophy. Again, they're highly intertwined, so you're going to get some hypertrophy from that. But for pure hypertrophy, uh, weighted decline sit-ups. How the fuck did you put 180 pounds on your bench in a year while partying and daily max out was not considered ideal movement? I, I, I said it earlier with kind of the, the pinned... Uh, question that I answered, but yeah, like we worked hard. We did eat a lot of food. Like there was a lot of calories being consumed that certainly played a part. Um, you know, we drank a lot, we smoked a lot, but there was a lot of, a lot of calorie consumption. So we were in a caloric surplus constantly, um, while, you know, abusing our bodies and we did Saturdays and Sundays. We didn't do any exercise or anything like that at all. We didn't work out or train or nothing. So, um, you know, maybe we played some basketball here and there, but we, there was recovery happening. Um, and there was a lot of calories being consumed. Like if you go back and I know of course, like it's not ideal and on social media, ideal and optimal are typically what always gets discussed. And if you do something slightly inoptimal, people are like, oh, you're going to lose all your gains or that's not the right way to do it. Again, 90% of it is just hard work and eating, uh, and recovery. Uh, the, the, that, that, 
optimization is the 10 percent even if you throw drinking and partying and stuff into the mix and and you know now you're sub 90 percent you're probably still around 80 as long as you're putting in the work and you're you're eating uh sufficient calories and protein uh to to uh grow and build muscle um so you know like i stalled out around you know a low 400s bench during that time uh so that's I, I ended up benching 550 at my peak so you know almost in that 80 percent of what i would ultimately go on to hit um while not necessarily taking every single aspect uh seriously and optimizing it still training seriously just with no real direction or sense of like what was proper training uh but we were working hard and with intent um and we were eating a lot of food to uh to carry us opinion on the carnivore diet trend would you try it no i'm not going to try carnivore there's no reason for me to try carnivore um carbs are your body's preferred fuel source um for training and maximal output uh if somebody wants to do carnivore, that's fine. Um, and I just talked about not worrying about being super optimal. Uh, but I, I do like my carbs with my training. Uh, and just, it's lacking. I don't feel like eliminating entire food groups. That just doesn't seem like the move for me. If you want to do it and enjoy it, by all means, go ahead. But uh, that is not for me. What is a respectable average SBD total at 105 kilos body weight go on open power lifting um you know find look up that weight class um which i think it's going to be 110s uh so look up the 110 kilo weight class uh find 50 percent right in the middle there's your average um i don't know top 20 percent what, what do you call respectable uh but the numbers are there. You, you can objectively, whatever your range of respectable is, uh, be it top 50%, may average may be respectable to you. Uh, there, there, it's an arbitrary number, but there, there's people to compare it to. So that's what I would go. Any lessons from lifting apply into finances and vice versa? Uh, patience and consistency. Uh, and then, you know, strategically taking chances uh, here and there when you have that base established, I, I would say. And, and that's pretty simple. Again, I'm not a financial expert, but uh, I do own a couple properties at this point. That's more than probably 99% of millennials. Uh, sometimes you get lucky too. Uh, so I, I would say, you know, again, being patient, being consistent, uh, working hard, so, so that you're ready when something falls in your lap or you're ready when there's your time to shoot that shot. Uh, that may be, maybe it's a moonshot, but you've got that base and that foundation to back you up that you can take that moonshot. How would you program for someone who wants a stronger pull-up or chin-up one rep max? Uh, not really different than I would program them if they wanted a stronger bench press or stronger squat. Um... Obviously, you can get away with a little more volume on something like pull-ups and chin-ups. Uh, so that's something to throw in there. But I, I really like building the volume uh, and then, you know, kind of peaking that up. Uh, so, yeah, it, you know, kind of like a, a linear progression almost. Um, you know, throwing in some uh, density training and some speed work in there. But not any different other than you can... Put more volume into it uh than some of the compound lifts our pre-work pre-workouts worth it never take them i'm not sure what their purpose is they are like coffee for lifting i mean yeah they give you a, a energy boost before lifting worth it is up to you or not uh is your training lacking or suffering uh and, and you feel like you need that energy boost that could be worth it to you i will say that they are one of the supplements that actually quote unquote work um and that you know they they do provide that um however th there could be uh you know negative side effects for you in terms of not being able to get to sleep at night and things like that that's why i i dialed way back on the pre-workout i generally i stopped taking pre-workout altogether for a long time um now on my saturday and sunday sessions i'll take like a half a scoop uh sometimes a quarter of a scoop of a very cheap and 
not very potent pre-workout. Um, but yeah, it, it's up to you whether they're worth it or not, but they do work if you will. I can deadlift 315 for three and squat 225 for six without a belt. Never really thought of belt, but does it help even if you are bracing correctly? Some guy in the gym told me that putting a belt means instant one plate increase. I wouldn't say instant one plate increase, but uh, especially on squats, you're going to be able to uh, load a little bit more with a belt on, uh, even if you are bracing correctly uh, without one, which is a good skill to know. Um, but yeah, I would absolutely get a belt um, because more overload means more strong. So, uh, some people don't even believe in beltless training at all. I think there's still some merit to training, uh, without equipment, uh, from time to time, but I would absolutely, uh, get a good belt and you only need to buy a good belt probably once in your whole life, maybe twice. Uh, so go ahead and spend up, up front, get you a nice 10 millimeter or 13 millimeter belt from pretty much any of the name brand companies. Uh, I prefer single prongs myself. Uh, if you want a lever, get a lever, but get you a good one. Maintaining body weight, pulling, pulling movements, OHP, arm and shoulder isolations are going up in weight, but my dip and bench press regressing from 12 dips to six to seven, bench from 225 to 155. I don't know what's happening, what to do, please help. Uh, without seeing like your complete training log and your diet and everything, it's hard to say. Uh, <laughs> but that's a huge regression. Maybe you're not prioritizing these lifts anymore. Uh, and you need to prioritize them again. Uh, but that, yeah, it doesn't make a lot of sense to regress that much. There's uh, some sort of underlying issue there for sure that needs addressing. Should I destroy my enemies or find peace within myself? Yes. What is the maximum amount of sets you'd recommend for the bench press? All of them. I'm planning to buy a wristband. For benching i assume you mean wrist wrap uh but i saw there are ones with a thumb fix and there are regular ones everyone i've ever used has a thumb loop and you loop it on your thumb and then you tie it around your or tie it wrap it around your wrist and then you take the thumb loop off uh because that's illegal in most feds to have the thumb loop on for whatever reason uh but get one of those again get a nice pair uh and they'll last you a long time do you ever throw any upper body moves on lower day, even pre heavy type upper moves or keep them strictly separate? Yeah, all the time. Uh, I do pull ups a lot on my lower days and the same thing like on my lower or on my upper days, I might do some box jumps. I might do some leg extensions, um, reverse sled pulls, things like that. Yeah. There's your upper body day. Don't be afraid to, to throw some lower movements in there. Um, even if they're minor. Uh, especially if they're minor, that would make the most sense to put them in there. That's not a big deal at all, and I do it all the time. Do you train in any specific way to increase your box jumps? Uh, the best thing I ever did for my box jumps was getting strong at squats and deadlifts, uh, and just by default, it made my jump higher. And, and that'll... I'm wanting to say there's a paper uh, I've referenced before. I can't think of it off the top of my head, but... Somewhere up into the range of like 1.5 body weight to two times body weight, just on squats, just getting that strong, uh, increases your jump by virtue of getting that strong. And then after that, there it's huge diminishing returns, getting stronger at the squat after that really doesn't help your jump. Uh, but otherwise after that, just jumping, uh, just doing jumps. And I don't, I've never really periodized them or anything like that. I just do them for fun and I take increases as they come on days that they come. Uh, every time I get an itch to want to really prioritize them, uh, I get a lower back injury that prevents me from doing so. So may maybe in 2024, I might try to bring some specificity to the jumps. How long after your bench press only phase did you try out OHP and what weight did you start with? Uh, it was, I think I tried it out when I was still kind of in my bench only phase. Uh, and the first time I ever maxed out on OHP, I did 250. Um, but I never really, I didn't periodize OHP until even much later into my powerlifting. What prehab exercises do you keep in your routine? Um, Prehab, rehab, whatever you want to call these like little dinky dunk uh, exercises. But uh, walking backwards, be it like dead milling or uh, reverse sled drags are a favorite of mine. Uh, 45 degree back extensions with or without weight. Dumbbell hammer curls is the GOAT. Uh, had those forever. Very lightweight, very high rep. Uh, face pulls, uh, something I keep in there. Uh, the McGill Big Three is something I enjoy doing. 
Um, I'm going to count cardio. I think cardio is a great prehab, be it walking, be it uh, elliptical machine, cycling, things of that nature. Um, I think cardio is a great prehab, if you will. Um, those are the ones that are coming to me off the top of my head right now. I'm sure there's other ones. Uh, I'll do like a just sit in a squat uh, intermittently during my day at work from time to time. Uh, oh yeah, and these, uh, fuck, I recommend these to all my clients too. How would, how dare me not say these on camera. Uh, extensor trainers, uh, these things are amazing for keeping tendonitis away. Uh, I'll just sit at my desk and, you know, hit like a set of 15 or 20 here or there and then do a hold and try to stretch out my fingers as far as I can with some resistance and hold it. So these are like nine bucks on Amazon. Uh, great buy for anybody. But that's today's Q&A. Peace!